House. I call Raymond Ho. Speaker, uh, much has been said about the background uh, of this bill, and much has been said about the book Into the River. Uh, I hope Into the River, uh, if I may use the uh, title uh, as a figurative uh, language, uh, could help guide us through some uncharted water. Uh, Mr. Bishop constantly said um, uh, the book had been banned in New Zealand. Was the book banned in New Zealand? Uh, technically, it wasn't. Um, it, is, it was subject to an entry restriction order uh, pending a decision by the Film and Literature Board uh, of Review, which means it cannot be sold in New Zealand or taken out of library. Uh, after six weeks of deliberation, the board issued its majority uh, decision classifying the book in October 2015 uh, as unrestricted. The president again uh, issued a strong dissenting opinion upholding his earlier view uh, that the book warranted a R18 uh, classification or at the very least R14. A classification. Uh, I want to acknowledge that. So the bill in its current form uh, not only has not only uh, exposed the really legislative um, anomaly, but also got the balance right. Me, uh, Madam Speaker, we are living uh, in the modern 21st century, uh, and the online surfing has incrementally become a new normal. Uh, in terms of content uh, classification, uh, we have a broadcast TV content which is classified under the Broadcasting Act uh, according to a code uh, that is overseen by the Broadcasting Standard Authority. We have got film content which is classified uh, by the classification office that, is, uh, that, that provides ratings. But for the online content, do we have adequate oversight, mediation, or power or ability at all in that regard? The answer is probably no. So there is a gray area in our law and our community standards that has not been addressed. We are also uh, living uh, in a modern Oteroa uh, and celebrating uh, our multiculturalism. We have more than uh, 150 nationality, uh, nationalities living in New Zealand. For the Chinese community, for, in, uh, for instance, we are celebrating all sorts of uh, cultural events and celebrating our ethnic languages and publications uh, in those languages. However, this may serve as a timely reminder that we may have some issues in that regard, particularly concerning uh, what we are talking about uh, in this bill. And also, particularly with regard to the proliferation of social media uh, in any languages other than in English. Now, in terms of classification of content or publications uh, classification concerning uh, ethnic languages, it is to some extent an uncharted territory. For example, there are at least uh, four uh, television channels broadcasting in uh, uh, Chinese in New Zealand, and there are about four or five uh, radio uh, channels servicing Chinese speaking audience, and uh, six Chinese language newspapers or magazines as well as a dozen online or social media news portal or websites. None of them are members of New Zealand Press Council. The Press Council's scope applies to published material in newspapers, magazines, and their websites, including audio and video streams, as well as to uh, digital sites with news content or blogs characterized by the new uh, commentary. Presumably the scope covers all above, uh, but in English only. 
Madam Speaker, we all know uh, an, uh, an, independent, an independent press uh, plays a vital role uh, in a democracy. It plays a very important role in protesting, maintaining, and guarding our freedom of expression. However, as a journalist turned politician, I do appreciate the distinctions between views and news and between facts and comments. However, in the case of a publication concerning ethnic or, in that regard, foreign languages, the reality is it is impossible to maintain the basics at the moment, let alone contents that may be caught in the definition of objectionable as defined uh, in the film, videos, and publication classifications act uh, of 1993. I can cite as an example, during the campaigning, there was a five-point statement that was widely circulated uh, via the Chinese social media uh, platform, uh, openly called upon supporters to give their party vote to the National Party. Top two reasons it gave were A, those who are receiving social welfare are, quote, and, and quote, laser bombs. And B, it likened refugees to terrorists. And the scaremongering had worked to some extent. We're not talking about politics here. We're talking about how to get our law, such as this bill, which will get passed into law, understood, appreciated, and eventually enforced in New Zealand. Thank you. Uh, I call Harete Ipanga. Uh, ahi ahi